Hey everyone. Today, we're breaking down why China's recent $1 billion deal to acquire Ghana's Achium gold mine is way more than just a business transaction. It's all about global power plays, economic strategy, and what this means in the ongoing US-China rivalry. Plus, we'll look at how Ghana's balancing these relationships with two superpowers to shape its future. Let's get right into it. Strategic Significance for China China's acquisition of Ghana's Achium gold mine is a lot like a chess move in the larger game of global power and influence, especially between the US and China. It's not just about getting the gold itself, it's about positioning, influence, and leverage on the global stage. Imagine this, China's economy is like a big engine, constantly needing fuel to keep running smoothly. In this case, that fuel is resources, like gold, which hold value no matter what's happening in the world. By buying the mine, China is securing its access to gold, which helps it stay strong financially, even when things like international sanctions or economic pressures from the US are in play. This is similar to how countries stockpile gold in their reserves to stabilize their economies, like the US Federal Reserve does. But China isn't just buying a mine, it's strengthening its grip in Africa, a continent rich in natural resources and growing economies. This move is part of China's bigger strategy, called the Belt and Road Initiative, BRI. Through this, China has invested heavily in African infrastructure, think roads, railways, and ports. This kind of investment helps build trust and dependence, like when someone lends you a hand with something important, and you start to rely on them more. In Ghana, China has funded numerous projects, which boosts their influence. By owning a major gold mine, China further solidifies its presence in the region. Now, let's consider the U.S. reaction. The U.S. has always seen itself as a key player in Africa, promoting democracy, economic freedom, and development. But compared to China, its approach is different. The U.S. tends to come with strings attached, more focus on governance, transparency, and human rights. While these are valuable, they often make U.S. investment offers slower and less flexible. China, on the other hand, is quick to act, offering large sums of money with fewer conditions. This makes China's deals more attractive to governments that need immediate cash flow for big projects. This competition isn't new. We've seen it before in other countries, like in Zambia, where China invested heavily in copper mining while the US emphasized long-term aid and trade agreements. Over time, many African nations have leaned more toward China's quicker, more straightforward investments, despite the potential risks of overdependence. In Ghana, this gold mine deal is another step in China's quiet but strategic march into Africa, while the US watches closely, trying to figure out how to maintain its influence. It's a delicate balancing act, and both China and the US are playing for long-term gains. US Concerns and Strategic Response The US has its eyebrows raised over China's acquisition of Ghana's Achium gold mine. It's not just about China getting its hands on another valuable resource, it's about the broader picture of influence and control, especially in Africa. For the US, this is like watching a neighbor slowly buy up property in your town, and while they're not breaking any rules, it's clear they're trying to reshape the neighborhood. The US sees this deal as part of a trend where China is gaining more economic power and political influence in regions the US has traditionally held sway. One concern is that China's investments, like this one in Ghana, come without the same emphasis on governance, transparency, or environmental standards that the US and its partners tend to promote. This can make China more appealing to countries that need fast cash or infrastructure development, but it also leaves these nations more dependent on China in the long run. Take Zambia, for instance. Over the years, China has invested heavily in Zambia's copper industry. While this boosted Zambia's economy, it also created a situation where the Zambian government became heavily indebted to China. This has raised alarm bells for the US because it creates leverage for China, both economically and politically. Similarly, in Ghana, owning a significant gold asset could give China influence not just over Ghana's mining sector but over its broader economic policies. The US likely sees this acquisition as a warning sign that it needs to deepen its engagement with Africa. But here's the challenge, US investments usually come with conditions about governance, anti-corruption measures, and long-term sustainability. While these are essential, 
they can make U.S. partnerships seem slow and bureaucratic compared to China's fast, no-strings-attached investments. That's a big part of why China has been able to move so quickly in places like Ghana. To respond, the U.S. may increase its efforts in areas like military cooperation, through programs like AFRICOM, and ramp up its initiatives like the Millennium Challenge Corporation, which focuses on large-scale development projects. The U.S. might also use trade policies like the African Growth and Opportunity Act AGOA, to offer more economic incentives to Ghana and other African nations, encouraging them to lean more on American partnerships. But the reality is, the U.S. is in a bit of a catch-up game here. China's model of fast investments, often without immediate concerns about human rights or environmental impact, is proving very attractive to governments that need results quickly. The U.S. knows it needs to adjust its strategy to maintain its influence, but it's a tricky balance to strike. While the U.S. can't, and probably shouldn't, compete on the exact same terms as China, it will have to offer compelling alternatives that address both economic needs and governance improvements to stay in the game. Ghana's relations with China and the U.S. Ghana finds itself in an interesting spot, juggling its relationships with two global superpowers, China and the U.S. It's like trying to balance on a seesaw with two kids, one much heavier, China with its fast investments, and the other offering steady but more controlled support, the U.S. Ghana's relationship with China China and Ghana have grown pretty close in recent years, largely thanks to China's aggressive investment strategy across Africa. China is now one of Ghana's biggest trade partners, and the relationship keeps expanding. Ghana has benefited from Chinese-funded infrastructure projects, roads, bridges, and energy plants, that have helped modernize the country quickly. Think of China as the friend who shows up with cash in hand, ready to help you fix your house right away. One of the standout examples of China's involvement in Ghana is the construction of the Bui Dam, a massive hydroelectric project. This was built with Chinese loans and expertise, and it's been crucial in boosting Ghana's power supply. The country's mining sector is another big area of Chinese investment, as we're seeing with the Achium gold mine deal. While these projects bring fast benefits, they often come with concerns about debt and long-term reliance on China. It's like getting a quick loan from a friend, but the catch is, you'll owe them for a long time. However, there are growing whispers about the risks of becoming too dependent on China. The fear is that if Ghana gets too tied up in Chinese loans and investments, it might lose some control over its own resources and policies. We've seen this happen in countries like Sri Lanka, where Chinese loans led to the country having to lease a major port to China when they couldn't repay their debt. Ghana's relationship with the U.S. The U.S. has been a long-standing partner of Ghana, though its approach is more gradual and comes with a focus on democratic governance, transparency, and development. The U.S. has supported Ghana through initiatives like the African Growth and Opportunity Act AGOA, which gives Ghana better access to U.S. markets for its exports, and the Millennium Challenge Corporation MCC, which has invested in Ghana's energy and transportation sectors. Unlike China's rapid investments, the U.S. takes a more cautious, steady approach. It's like having a friend who wants to help you with long-term planning for your house, making sure it's sustainable, environmentally friendly, and up to code. For example, the U.S. has invested in healthcare initiatives in Ghana, such as providing support for HIV AIDS treatment and prevention programs, which have had a lasting positive impact on public health. This is part of the U.S. focus on building institutions and systems that improve quality of life over time. However, from Ghana's perspective, U.S. aid and investment can sometimes feel slower and more conditional. There's more red tape involved, and the benefits aren't always as immediate as China's large infrastructure projects. But the U.S. emphasizes that its support is aimed at fostering self-reliance, promoting human rights, and building democratic institutions. The Balancing Act For Ghana, the challenge is managing these relationships without becoming overly dependent on either side. On one hand, China offers quick fixes and large-scale investment with fewer strings attached. On the other hand, the U.S. provides long-term development support but with more oversight and conditions. Ghana has to walk a fine line, leveraging Chinese investment to boost its economy while maintaining its strong ties to the U.S., which offers stability and global influence. This balancing act is something we've seen other African countries navigate as well. Take Kenya, 
For example, like Ghana, Kenya has been a major recipient of Chinese investment for infrastructure but remains strategically tied to the U.S. through military and development partnerships. Ghana, too, is trying to enjoy the benefits of both relationships while maintaining its autonomy and avoiding the pitfalls of over-reliance on either superpower. Conclusion In the bigger picture, China's acquisition of Ghana's Achium gold mine is part of a larger game between global powers like the U.S. and China. China's approach is clear, move fast, secure resources, and build influence through quick, substantial investments. It's like laying down tracks ahead of a speeding train. China has already done this in countries like Zambia and Kenya, where its investments have locked in long-term partnerships and resource control. On the other hand, the U.S. plays a longer game, focusing on stability, governance, and sustainable development. It's more about planting seeds that will grow over time. While this approach has benefits, like building stronger institutions, it often means slower results, which can be less attractive to countries in immediate need of cash or infrastructure. For Ghana, this tug-of-war between China and the US brings opportunities and challenges. The country can leverage China's fast-tracked investments to develop quickly but has to be careful not to get too entangled in debt or lose control over its resources. At the same time, maintaining strong ties with the U.S. is crucial for its long-term stability and global standing. It's a delicate balance, and Ghana is trying to make the most of both relationships, taking the quick wins from China while securing the steady support of the U.S. for its future. In the end, how Ghana navigates this will set the tone for its development trajectory, and other countries in Africa will be watching closely. It's a balancing act that many nations are facing as China and the U.S. continue to jostle for influence across the globe.